greet and acknowledge uh, Apostle and Prophet uh, for the time we are receiving as the pastors of Gateway uh, to come and share the scripture. And uh, appreciation to everybody who's working behind the scenes to get the services right. Uh, you know, there's lots of people who are running around and we appreciate the work that you're doing. Um, I want you to greet a person that's sitting next to you, uh, especially if you know them and uh, look them in the face. I know couples, couples usually don't look there. You know, sometimes you'll find that your couple has got wrinkles and you've never seen them. <laughs> I, I always say you may be, you may be an having an inter interview on Tuesday and you are sitting next to a person who's going to interview you. So greet them, you know, uh, tell them your name and uh, you may find favor. I just want to make a disclaimer before I start that when Apostle gives us a topic, uh, there's an unwritten rule that people must not take other people's verses. <laughs> but... Um, my verses have all have all been taken, Bazalwan. So uh, I, th I think, uh, Baruti, please next year, uh, just uh, I'm booking my verses. <laughs> Don't take our verses, Bazalwan, uh, because it becomes difficult when you come and preach, and all the verses have been said, you know. Uh, so during Easter, you know, we are in Easter time. There's a lot of voices that speak. Uh, and you will see social media will be saying Easter this, Easter that, Valentine this, Valentine that, Christmas this, Christ, Christmas that. Others says Jesus was not uh, crucified on a cross. It was a T-shape. Others say it's an X. Others say it's a small T. You know, there's a lot of other things that are happening around when we come to uh, times such as the Easter uh, some saying it's pagan worship and all of these things. And I just want to say, as Apostle said, people argue at the level of their knowledge. Uh, and sometimes it's, it's unnecessary for us to keep arguing and, and, and say, no, it was 25th. And then somebody will say, no, but Jesus died on Friday. You said it's three days, but, but why Sunday? You know, so you we'll get confused with these things. All we know is that Jesus died. And Jesus rose again. Whether it was three days, three and a half, and you can calculate 24 hours. Hey, I get it now. You know, right now we know that we are celebrating Easter as Christian, as children of God. Hallelujah. Yeah, we are celebrating, man. Jesus died. He was born and he died. And we know that Jesus resurrected. Whether it was day number, whatever, it doesn't make a difference. He died and he is alive. In him we live, we function, and we have our identity. And that's where, that's what's important. Whether he was born on the 25th of December, in September, and all of those things, we just move away and let them argue at their level. Amen? So we believe that Jesus has transcended, you know, he transcends all realms and spheres of our lives. And... Uh, I want to just have five points as I, I, I share, uh, Pastor Nantlanta. Uh, just five points quickly. Easter, as we have uh, all been giving the topic this year, we're talking about the cross, a place of great exchange. You know, when you drive, you see the major exchanges, Kululis interchange and everything. You think about those things, and one one pastor said, "Oh, it was it was a post. It was Prophet Stella says I was going that way, and then I came to an interchange where I met Christ. So we are on a major, or we met a major interchange as believers, and of course as unbelievers the same. Paul, when he preaches uh, to the Athenians in Europagas in Acts chapter seventeen. Uh, 16 to 34, he addresses the Athenians and he talks to them about repentance and he talks to them about resurrection. And then the Bible says in verse 32, some mocked, others postponed. 
and others joined and believed. So even with, the, with every message, there will some who will be mocking. And, but others, as, as, as Apostle said this morning, that others said, get a wanna, get a wanna later, you know, no postpone. I was already a girl, I know, yeah, you got the wall, but Rikin again, a hand, they did the same. If you read uh, Acts chapter 17, verse 34, or verse 32, and others believed, and we are that remnant that believes. Irrespective of what social media says, we are those who believe in Christ. First Corinthians 1 18, it says them. To preach the message of the cross seems like sheer nonsense to those who are on their way to destruction. But to us who are on our way to salvation, it is the mighty power of God released within us. He invokes a lot of, of emotions on people every time he, he speaks. Depending on whether you are a lender or you are a borrower, when uh, the MPC uh, comes and then but, hey, we have an inflation targeting of 3 to 6%, now we are at 7%, we are increasing the interest rate. Those of us who have got loans, hey, run now. But those who have got investment, they become happy. Yes. It's the same message, isn't it? Same message, but depending on where you are, you receive it differently. Uh, so, Rukuba Laba by Baba Naling, the way it's in the Telesage, Alamus or Ateo Henya, and I war Bulaya. I didn't say the Arbulaya. So, similarly, when the message of the message was preached, some said it's foolishness, and others said it's power. To some, it's life, to others, it's death, to some, it's condemnation, but to others, you know, it's justice, freedom and bondage, victory and loss, beginning and the end, eternal life to eternal death. The same message pronounces something different from us. So the point number one, I was saying, the message of the cross brings contradiction. You know, it, it, it contradicts, depending on where you are, it, 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 it brings a contradiction because you are thinking it's saying this, but this is what it's saying, it's giving you life, even though, it, it looked as something as that, that, that is weak, you know. Point number two, the message of the cross comes with disruption. Colossians chapter 2, 15, Then Jesus made a public spectacle of all the powers and principalities of darkness, stripping away from them every weapon and all their spiritual authority and power to accuse us. And by the power of the cross, Jesus led them around as prisoners, in a procession of triumph, he was not their prisoner, they were his. So the message of the cross brings disruption. You know, yesterday when while I was walking, after eating, walking around, uh, we had a very good conference. You know, our church is a continuing church. We've got lots of young children, two, three years old. But I saw this two-year-old seriously on his phone. And I'm like, this guy can't even talk, but he's on his phone and he's doing great things on that phone. And that's that's how life is now. Zechariah 8, 11, if you are in the RMI, but let's go verse a line in the Lord changes. I hope you like it. Here we are, okay. Here we are. Zechariah 8, verse 11. You can, you can put it there. Uh, message Bible. These things have changed. The Lord changes. So we are in a different era. You know, uh, when the, the order has changed, we are no more in that old order. There is disruption that has come. You are going to be disrupted when you come to the message of the cross. You know, you're going to be, it, uh, it, it's going to challenge the status quo. You see, but things have changed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but things have changed. So things have changed. Disruption has come. Your life is going to be disrupted. You know, the things that look impossible are going to be possible. Yes. Things that don't make sense are going to make sense. You know, there's going to be a roller coaster when you come to the message of the cross. Disruption is not easy, but we welcome it anyway. 
because it's part of change. If you don't want change, uh, then disruption is not going to be your friend. But you're going to you're going to stagnate, unfortunately. Uh, all of us here sitting here, we have survived one of the biggest disruptions in our modern history, COVID. You know, some years ago, all of all of us we have accepted, accepted or no rabbi. If you look, who saw Sabara Maski were saying, hey, there's something wrong with me. Because disruption came and we we embraced it and we worked through it. In the church, in families, in business. Some of you have not been to the office for many, many, many months. You know, everything was disrupted. So you can't say, no, nah, I don't, I can't take message of the cross because I don't want to be disrupted. You are going to be disrupted. Government has disrupted you and you accepted it. You know? So the 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 the, the, the cross came with disruption and you are going to be disrupted number three the cross is confrontational the message of the cross is confrontational second timothy 3 1 to 9 but specifically on uh verse one it says but you need to be aware that in the final days the culture of society will become extremely fierce and difficult for the people of god it says they may pretend to have respect for God, but in reality, they want nothing to do with God's power. They will maintain their outward appearance of religion, but will uh, have repudiated its power. So the message is confrontational. The cultures that we have and the message of the cross are going to come to a time where they don't agree. In my culture, in my tradition, but what is the message of the cross saying? It's going to disrupt you. It's going to disrupt you. Uh, the, the, that thing of me, myself, and I is going to be disrupted. You know? The replacement may not look attractive. It may not look attractive because you, th you, you think you have, but you actually don't have. And then Apostle spoke about it this morning. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, it says, Christ existed in the form of god yet he gave no thought of seizing equality with god as his supreme prize he was the greatest but he accepted the confrontation and said yes i know i'm there but let me come to a certain level and if you read hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 and the same philippians you'll see that accordingly jesus was rewarded with the greatest name ever so sometimes when you come down, submit yourself, uh, humiliate yourself, uh, you know, be obedient, be a servant. You think that, no, 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 uh, in this country or in this era that we live by, uh, those who win are the aggressive ones. But the Bible does continue to say the meek shall inherit the earth. Not the weak, the meek. Not the timid, but the meek. And Jesus is the one who said the meek shall inherit the earth so the, the the fourth one is that the message of the cross is though is going to challenge ungodly habits and one of the biggest ungodly habits is pride so if you want to eat from the message of the cross your pride is going to be challenged romans chapter one i mean chapter six one and fourteen it says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under the law but under the grace. So the power of God is the one that makes you not to sin. The challenge, I mean the sin that is in you is going to be challenged because you've got grace. And it's not this grace of I can do all things through me who does the things no it's the grace that says i cannot do this i cannot do this i cannot do this and everybody says i when i'm a name and you will challenge even yourself when i mean aggression you know her but sometimes the message of the cross will confront you and challenge you because that action is ungodly we are still struggling some of us with 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 some of these things but the message of the cross is going to challenge that romans chapter 12 verse 3 the bible says god has given me the grace to speak a warning about pride i would ask each one of you to be emptied of self-promotion and not create a false image of your importance 
Instead, honestly assess your worth by using your God-given faith and the standard of measurement. And then you will see your true value with an appropriate self-esteem. Pride is one of the biggest things that is killing us as children of God. Even as us who are born again. You know, and, and we come up large with what, whatever we come up large with. And one of the biggest things about pride come, goes with money. Somebody says money is the lowest form of prosperity and wealth. And but it's the lowest form of prosperity and wealth. So when you think you've got money and you're everything, that's the lowest form of prosperity because there are levels in prosperity. But when you are stuck in the money issue, you are unable to transcend to the next level and the next level and the next level of prosperity and wealth. And pride, what it does, it holds you there. And it tells you, I know about Waganam. Where else, uh, as Apostle used to say, you are a village champion. Yeah. So pride is, is very low. If, you, if you're going to stay in pride, uh, then it's, it's just a facade. You know, it, it makes you look as if, you know, and, and definitely you are not. Pride, selfishness, those things are self-defeating, Barzolani. And they clog and they block the flow of freshness and progress in your life. Uh, it is pri pride is practiced by the poor and the rich. There's a lot of poor people who are very proud. Uh, very proud. All proud from nothing. There's nothing here, Mara. Pride. Because pride does not care your status, your ing ing. Pride just hangs on to you. And it clutches on to you just to take you down. Matthew 5, verse 5. I said about that, blessed are the meek. I'm on point number 5. Point number 5, one of the things that I like is to look into the future and future where we're going. And I think I've said it once or twice here. And uh, I want, I, I, I know you know about humanoids, you know about AIs, you know about super AIs. Uh, the other time I said, we may not know that some of you are actually not human. You are humanoids, but I can't really know. We will never know. Because these humanoids now, they look like all of us. They eat with us. They do everything. So there's this, there's this AI that I engaged. It's called uh, ChatGPT. Who knows that AI? Uh, I, I, I'm expecting, at least if you are less than 21, raise your hand. You should know, or maybe they're outside. Oh, they don't know. There's something called ChatGPT. So ChatGPT uh, can engage you in any subject that you want to talk about. Actually, it's, it's becoming a problem in in in, in uh, at schools because if you've got an assignment, you can t say ChatGPT, can you write an assignment for me about whatever uh, by my 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 holiday? Uh, I want a thousand words. And then da, 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 within three, five seconds, your assignment is there, you take it. Oh, and Mara, yeah, what's how you say it? But whenever on the universities, uh, they tell you, if you come with ChatGPT, we will disqualify you. So I'm not saying go and use it, but I spoke to it. I asked ChatGPT, what do you think about this thing called the message? Uh, I mean, the, 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 the topic. Uh, uh, yeah, Abazola, I did. I engaged an AI, uh, and I said, "What do you think?" Where now? Because th this thing does not have life, does not have anything. Uh, it's just a computer. I said, "They gave us a topic at church. What do you think?" <laughs> uh, okay, uh, let me let me tell you what Chat GP say. Uh, let me tell you what Chat GP says. Uh, okay, the, the, the first point was not it. Uh, this is the <laughs> It says the cross is a place of exchange for sin and, and for righteousness. This thing has never lived, doesn't have blood, doesn't have everything. But it says the cross represents a place of exchange for other things in the Christian faith. It says sorrow for joy. 
So I checked and I said, I said, this thing is so right. Isaiah 61 verse 3, it says, Bestow them crown uh, of beauty instead of ashes, oil of joy instead of mourning, and garment of praise instead of spirit of despair. That's a computer telling you that. It says, number two, death for life the cross represents exchange of physical death for eternal life it says weakness for strength paul writes it even told me the verse it says paul writes in second corinthians 12 verse 9 but he said to me my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness therefore i will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that christ's power may rest on me it says number four guilt for forgiveness believers can be forgiven can you imagine a human telling you about believers it says believers can be forgiven of their sins this thing doesn't know a sin but it says they can experience freedom that comes from being released from guilt and shame and then number five it says darkness for light jesus said in john 8 verse 12 i am the light of the world whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life <laughs> These AIs are powerful, man. You know, and and pastors, I'm not saying when you preach, go to church GPT, uh, but it's I I did so, yeah. So I'm I I am done. I just want to conclude by saying number one, I said that the message of the cross brings contradiction. Number two, it comes with disruption. Number three, it's confrontational, but it's got great rewards. Number four, it challenges ungodly habits. And even the AIs agree that the cross is a place of great exchange. The last two verses, Matthew chapter 11, it says, Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden. Uh, Apostle spoke at length on that verse, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke on you and learn from me for i am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest in your soul for my yoke is easy my bed and is light apostle spoke about it and he said you are gonna have a yoke when 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 you take the message of the cross but it's light it's lighter than what you are carrying now Isaiah 55 1 come all who are thirsty come to the waters and you without money come by and eat come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. God bless you.